Hello everyone, Luke here from 3D Tutor. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to set up a decal system and how to make use out of it within Unreal Engine 5. To start off, you'll need to get yourself some images with PNG format and the ones that have transparent background. The ones that I have now, you can get them for free from the links down in the description below. So I've got a couple of these set up for myself. As you can see, they have transparency within it. Once you have them imported, you'll need to create yourself a material. Right click within a folder, select material, and we can call this a decal mat, like so. Let's double click on it to go inside of it. Now we're going to drag one of the textures into the level scene, like so. Then we're going to Connect the RGB value to the base color itself like so. Make sure that the alpha is connected to the opacity. However, right now it is turned off. So what we need to do is we need to click on the matte properties itself. And we need to make sure we change the blend mode from opaque to translucent. And also while we're at it, we need to make sure that we're changing the material domain. It is set to surface but the decal wouldn't be applied if we were to use that. So we need to change it to deferred decal material domain. So anyway, once we're done with that, we can continue on working with our texture. So we're going to apply the alpha onto the opacity layer like so. And we're more or less done. In regards to setting up our image as a decal, but we're going to make some extra changes to it. Firstly, we'll change the texture sample to be a parameter. So by right clicking on the texture sample, we can convert it to parameter. This will allow us to change it within our instance. We can call this one as decal image. So, and also what we can do is we can get some of the roughness values as well to be changed with within the decal so by holding one on your keyboard and left mouse button clicking left mouse button on the material graph we get this value and with it we can simply drag it onto the roughness so then we're going to right click and convert this to parameter and call this roughness just like that, we'll have an adjustable roughness. We can also make sure that we change the default value from zero. So it could be by default set to a bit higher of a value. I usually set it to 0.8. As that will not give it too much of a glossiness, but it won't give off a complete rough of a material as well. So now that we're done with these, we can go ahead and control and S, click control S to save it. Once we're done with that, we can close down our material graph and we get ourselves a decal material. Now we're not going to be using it itself since we can create material instances out of it. So right click and create material instance. And for the first one, I'm just going to keep it as is. So by double clicking on it, we'll notice that we have a roughness value and a decal image that we can change. For now, I'm going to leave it as is, as these are the values that I'd like to use for now. Now, to create the decal itself, we're going to go to the quickly add to the project icon over here. We're going to click on it and search for decal. So let's go ahead and select it, drag it into our scene like so. I'm not seeing the icon and that's because we need to press the G to go out of the game mode to actually visualize the icon like so. By default, you'll be getting this sort of a look. And right away, we're just going to be dragging our material instance onto the decal material location like so. To get this sort of a result. Now, the way this decal works is if you look at the icon, it has an arrow with it, which shows the location of your projection. So right now, because it's facing downwards, 
we're going to get ourselves a decal that's going to be projected downwards like so. Also, this entire box is being used to apply the projection onto our world. So keep that in mind. But now I will go ahead and click E to go into my rotation tool and rotate it 90 degrees like so. Then if I click W to go into my translate tool and move it back onto the wall, we'll see that it is now sticking up to the wall. Obviously this is too big, so in order to decrease the scale of the decal, we're going to be using the values within the properties tab underneath the decal scale. If we were to drag it, we were to hold and drag it downwards like so, we're going to lower the scale of the entire decal. Going to get it closer to the wall, like so. I'll actually make it just a little bit more, just a little smaller, since I want it to be right underneath the box, like so. Now, if we have a look at it, it is being applied, the rust is being applied onto the box itself because it is being applied onto the entire world. And one way we can fix it is by either getting the projection way closer to the wall. This way, it is not being affected by the object. Or alternatively, what we can do is we can set it so this box, this prop that's on a wall, does not take any of the decals onto itself. So for that, we need to go onto the object itself. Then within it, within the properties tab of that object, we're going to be searching for decal. And underneath the rendering advanced, we'll see a receive decals. If we were to unclick that, we'll automatically remove the decal from this, from this specific object. So this will remove all the decals that you have within your world from this object. So keep that in mind. Now properly apply it onto the wall. So. Going to make it just a little bit smaller. Get it underneath it. And just like that, we can just like that we can add some extra detail onto our world oh and the biggest reason why i try to untick receives decals more rather than just blending in with the world is because mainly when you get far away it starts to lose its opacity as you see like when we're having our projection box further away from the wall when we're moving it inwards it is starting to lose or fade out so I always try to instead of moving it into the wall I always try to just simply untick the decal option like so so now we can make use out of this material decal instance that we created in order to get ourselves more of that so firstly, I'll just duplicate this real, real quick and upscale it by a little bit. Around this amount will be good enough. Now we'll need to duplicate our material instance. So click on it, control C, control V, make a duplicate. Let's double click on this material instance and we can change the decal parameter. So by simply dragging our upper image into it like so we can change it right away and also i reckon i can change the roughness material for this so from 0.8 i'll change it to 0.6 instead just to get a little bit more of a shininess off of it now we can click ctrl and s to save it go out of it and we're going to be applying it onto our projection so with this decal selected we're going to drag our material instance into the material tab like so. And that's how we get ourselves a decal for the graffiti. Now let's say you have another material instance with let's say another decal. 
and you want it to be also present within your world. So let's say I'm applying it a different decal. And let's say we want to have this decal on top of our previous one. What we can do is we can set an order priority for them to be displayed. Right now they're set to the same one. Underneath the decal tab, find ourselves a sort order. And the higher number is going to be displayed first, projected first. So from zero, we're going to be changing it to one. And just like that, we're going to apply ourselves a decal that's going to be on top of our previous one. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you enjoyed the video and would like to check out more work that we do, click on the links down in the description. Find out more online courses, 3D models, as well as PBR texture sets. Thanks for watching.